We are the Gujarat Technological University. Since its inception over a decade ago, GTU has been empowering young and curating minds to realize their true potential. Over 4 lakh inspired students are enrolled with one of the premier academic universities in India. With more than 450 affiliated colleges in its fold operating across 5 zones of the state, GTU, the International Innovative University, your place to move forward. Okay, so good morning to everybody. Uh, in the last lecture, we have discussed about various form of a quadrature phase shift key, QPSK. So, uh, QPSK is simply known as a quadrature phase shift key and it is uh, belongs to the family of a phase shift key. Uh, we have even discussed about the binary phase shift key where m is equal to 2, then we have discussed about the uh, 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 QPSK quadrature phase shift key with m, uh, m is equal to 4. Uh, the main application of uh, QPSK was in uh, WCDMA. In WCDMA, the main modulation scheme was QPSK in the third generation. Even today, uh, in satellite communication and very advanced wireless technology, QPSK is still. Uh, uh, is still a very uh, potential uh, candidate a mo a modulation scheme uh, so what we have covered uh, last time is about the uh, QPSK signal mathematical representation QPSK signal waveform we even discuss about the con uh, offset QPSK constellation diagram of QPSK and the circuit of modulator and demodulator of QPSK so this part we already uh, learned in last lecture now in today's lecture, we will learn about the two very important modulation scheme. One is the quadrature amplitude modulation, simply known as a QAM. And the another one is known as a continuous phase shift key. Continuous phase shift key. That is simple known as a continuous uh, CPM. So we'll try to look uh, over this all modulation scheme today and we will conclude this lecture uh, with a concluding remark about the comparison of all the modulation scheme like ASK, FSK and B, uh, uh, PSK uh, with uh, its B terror rate performance. So here we are going to start with the quadrature amplitude modulation. Now uh, in a QPSK where m is equal to 4 so we are uh, getting a 4 phase uh, 45 degree, 135 degree, 225 degree and 315 degree and each phase represent the one symbol. So we kept the amplitude constant there only the symbol to symbol variation is uh, based on the phase only. So phase would be changed from symbol to uh, symbol. So S1, S2, S3 and S4 all four symbol have a same magnitude or amplitude but they can be represent with a different phase. So this part we have learned but uh, this scheme has some uh, uh, demerits uh, or disadvantage. The one disadvantage is if you go beyond m is equal to 4, then the problem is uh, like as if you go with 8 PSK, uh, then if uh, in QPSK we have m is equal to 4, but if you take m is equal to 8, then it is known as 8 PSK. So in 8 PSK, we have a uh, three bit combination so there are eight combinations are there in a total s1 s1 symbol is the first symbol represent the bit combination 0 0 0 then 0 0 1 is a s2 symbol and then so for all and then s8 symbol the last symbol is re represent the bit combination 1 1 1 so here we have a one symbol represent three bit And there are eight combinations. So m is equal to eight. There are eight combinations, and based on this eight combination, the signal is known as a eight PSK signal. But here the problem with the scheme is that 
the difference between two neighboring uh, phase the phase difference if you observe here uh, if any two uh, you can consider if i consider this one so what is the delta phi delta phi is the phase difference between two symbol so if you find delta phi here so that is simple 45 degree in earlier case of qpsk yeah, this is for 8 psk and if you consider the earlier case of qpsk so in qpsk delta phi was pi by 2 or 90 degree so if you go beyond the qpsk so the phase difference between two neighboring symbol is going to decrease if now if you choose the 16 psk then delta pi is going further down as a 22.5 degree and so so if the size of constellation points has been increased in the particular modulation scheme of a psk then here thus the difference between two neighboring phase is also going to decrease and then it leads to the phase error so the, all the PSK scheme above the QPSK is highly sensitive to the phase variation. Right, so that is the same thing. Pi by 4 phase is observed neighboring constellation point. And if you go further and further with 16 PSK, 30 to 64 PSK, so phase difference is reduced and that becomes a more sensitive to the phase error. So looking to that, the PSK scheme beyond QPSK like 8 PSK, 16 PSK are not used in communication or they are not as much popular as the QPSK scheme is there. But if you are not using the scheme like 8 PSK, 16 PSK and so forth, then the problem comes is how we can increase the beta rate further or beyond the QPSK. So QPSK set a limit of two bits in a one symbol, but if you want to increase the spectral efficiency or if you want to increase the peak rate, then we need to transmit more number of bits in a symbol. So two is not sufficient in some cases. So then the new scheme has been proposed. And in the new scheme, we are not only changing the phase, but we are changing the amplitude and phase both as per the symbol. And this is known as a quadrature amplitude modulation. And this is proposed to take the advantage of higher bit rate with the constellation size. So now what is the difference in QM? So Q, QM is basically the mixing structure of ASK plus PSK. So what is ASK that we have learned so far is ASK is a scheme in which the information is stored in form of amplitude variation. Where PSK is a scheme where information is stored in form of a phase. So if we combine both together, so we have a symbol, we have a set of symbol with same magnitude but different phase then we have another set of symbol which have different magnitude than the earlier set but the symbol which belongs to the set number two they all have a same amplitude but they are deeper in terms of a phase then we have a set three so what we can see here we can make the multiple copy like this we can have a set one you can see there are four symbol s1 s2 s3 and s4 in set two you can have this another symbol like as s5 s6 s7 and s8 now what is the difference we here so that difference is this all can be represented with the set of amplitude A, but the phase would be a phi 1. Then S2 can also be represented with the amplitude that simply I will say A1 because to represent the difference between the set as a set 1. So A1 is the same amplitude with S2, S2 symbol, but the deep phase is phi 2. 
then you have s3 with a1 and y3 and you have s4 also with a1 but the base is y4 this one you have, you can note down so this is the very important part that we can learn now what with this uh, what with the another symbol s5 s6 s7 and a8 so s5 is a different amplitude than the first set so that can be represented with the phase a and y i and that is represented with the different uh, amplitude a2 and phase phi 2 uh, phi i sorry so that is again the phase are repeated over here s6 s7 and s8 these are the four symbol and that you can represent with a2 amplitude but the phase here is repeated phi 1 is repeated so phi 1 is the phase of symbol s5 and the same is of a symbol s1 but they are different in terms of amplitude that is the same amplitude but the phase is different that is same amplitude but the phase is different phi 3 and that is the same amplitude phase 4 so this phase 4 is like as a QPSK because in QPSK we have 4 phase but the one quantity we have added here is the amplitude so symbol to symbol there would be two variations are observed one is in terms of amplitude and another is in terms of a phase set 1 all the symbol have a same amplitude but the different phase the same phase are repeated for the set number 2 but all the symbols are represented with the different amplitude of a2 so that is the variation so now if you represent the quadrature amplitude modulation this q is for quadrature a for amplitude and m for modulation so that this we can say the symbol can be represented in mathematical form is ei cos omega ct plus phi i right so ai is vary from i would be a 1 to n and accordingly the phase is also vary so amplitude and phase both will be vary as per the uh, for symbol to symbol and so here information is not only stored in terms of amplitude like as ask but with the phase also so this is a combination of ASK and PSK both. So this is simple. The name is given as a quadrature amplitude modulation. Now we will go for, uh, we can start with for 16 uh, QM. Uh, we can even, you can, you can even learn about the 8 QM also. But here, this is an example in which everything would be clear. So in 16 QM, so M is equal to 16 here. Here m is equal, uh, if you take this, if you consider 16 qm, so here m is equal to uh, that we write here, so that will be more clear. So m would be equal to 16, n is equal to 2 raised to n. So if you find the value of n, so n is equal to 4. So every symbol is a bit combination, 4 4 bit combination. So let's say this one could be given as a name of S1. This could be given a name of S2, then would be S3, then would be S4. Now, if you give the name of this as S5, this would be S6, then it would be S7, it would be S8. Then further you give the name of uh, this one S9, S10, uh, s11 and s12 and then we take this boundary s13 then s14 and then here s15 and then s16 okay so there are 16 symbols are there and they have a unique bit combination is to be assigned for every symbol now if we start with this one this is the one this magnitude is 3 this magnitude is minus 1 and this magnitude is roughly considered as a minus 3 this q is a imaginary axis so we can say this one is a j this would be of a 3j this would be of a minus j and this would be of a minus 3j now, if you have to represent every bit, 
right? So there are four sets are there. You can assume or there are four set. This one, all the bits like this S1, S2, S3 and S4, they are at the same distance from the origin. So this all are part of this circle. Right. Now, if you choose the different color, the another symbol like is S5, S6, right? So they are also part of a one circle like this one. Right. And if I'm not good in drawing, but it's you can consider like this way. There would be another circle. So this is of radius R1. This R1 shows the magnitude. And if you consider this one from here. So this radius is simple known as a R2 radius. Now there are another bits like is uh, this one and this one and so forth. So if I draw another circle from here. So they are represented by some radius like as R3. They all are at the same distance of R3. And if you plot one more to cover this one, if you if you try to cover this one, then you get you will get there there will be some more that can be covered over here. So that can be represented with some radius as R4. Okay. So we have a four set and the what are the uh, magnitudes are there uh, if you if i consider the uh, uh, sorry phase so, so that is the 45 degree this one is uh, how much 135 degree this one is the 215 degree and this is the 315 how you represent this right so this s1 symbol can be represent as here these are the coordinates so that is the j and that is one so s1 symbol uh, so i think you understand this uh, so now i remove this portion uh, so you may better understand okay so this is one part Okay, so this is minus three. Okay, so now we start with S1 symbol. So S1 symbol is basically a combination of one and J. So S1 symbol can be represented as a one plus J. Now, if you see about S2 symbol, so S2 symbol is basically represent as here minus one. This would be the of minus one and here it would be J. So S2 symbol can be represented as minus one plus J. Then we have a s3 symbol so s3 symbol is minus one and that would be of minus j so s3 symbol can be represented as minus one minus j. and if we say s4 symbol here so it is one and j so that would be represented as one plus j now if you find the magnitude of this and the phase so how we can find this so for if anything is like as x plus j y so its magnitude r is a square root of x square plus y square and if you find the theta of anything so it is tan inverse y by x so one uh, if you uh, if you find for first one so that is a square root of one plus one square root two right and here tan inverse one by one so that is of 45 degree so it can be represented as a square root 2 and angle is 45 degree. Now for S2 symbol is a minus 1 square is 1 plus 
j is multiplied with 1 1 square so square root 2 so that can also be represented with but that is minus so that can be represented with 135 degree the magnitude of uh, the next one here if you find the magnitude of next one so square root 2 and that is of 215 degree and if you find the magnitude of this one so uh, sorry 225 and this is of 315 degree so what you can observe here is all this symbol s1 s2 s3 and s4 have the same magnitude this shows the magnitude they have a same magnitude and this shows the pace but they have a different pace the first symbol is a 45 degree the second is a 135 degree then 215 and then 315 degree right now if if we go further and uh, if we choose the another symbol from any circle like uh, the outer circle the outer circle so we can concentrate on s5 so s5 symbol can be represented as this is the 3 and this would be of 3j so represent 3 plus 3j then s6 symbol can be represented as a my here s6 symbol so it is minus 3 plus 3j s7 symbol is basically here so if we elaborate here it is minus 3 and on imaginary axis if we expand it so it is the approximately of 3j but it's a minus so that is minus 3j minus 3 and if you consider s8 like this one so it is the 3 and here it is minus 3j so it is 3 and minus 3j and if we again find the magnitude here so magnitude and uh, so we can here simply write m for magnitude and base so what are the magnitude of this four symbol so that is the square root of uh, uh, 3 square so 9 plus 9 square root 8 so that is of uh, 3 into square root 2 so that have is 3 into square root 2 what is the magnitude of this same 3 into square root 2 3 into square root 2 3 into square root 2 and if you uh, if you find the phase so that is the similar of this 3 by 3 again gives a 1 and then it's a 45 degree so that would be a 45 degree 135 degree 215 uh, sorry 225 degree and this one is of 3 1 so what you can observe in this this is a set number one and this is a set number two so you can observe here the amplitudes are same in a particular set here it's a three into square root two in set one all have the same amplitude of square root two square root two so they belong to the same circle and at the same distance from origin because this magnitude defines the distance the line of sight distance between the symbol and origin and if you see the phase so in particular set the magnitude is same but the phase are different if we go to the set 1 to set 2 so the same phase are repeated but with a different magnitude and in particular set all have the same magnitude but the phase are different so this different phase is like as a quadrature phase shift key and here the magnitude does vary from set to set and phase does vary from uh, uh, symbol to symbol in particular set so same you can he here uh, if you go for a s9 then s s9 here can be represent as a 3 plus j s10 can be represent as a minus 3 plus j s11 can be represent here with uh, with this uh, uh, like as a j and what is the minus 3 plus j and so forth so in the similar fashion you can identify every phase and the symbol so this is the one part you need to learn and if you go beyond to that then we have we may have a 64 qm so in 64 qm m is equal to 64 is equal to 2 raised to n so n requires 6 bit needed to, to represent a one symbol but the total number of symbol and 
the total symbol is equal to the n which is simply 64 so they have a 6 bit combination these are the 6 bit combination and we can say this all have the same magnitude but the different phase then if you move further then you can pick up this one and here this one there is a second circle they have the same magnitude but the different phase then you can have a third circle and so for all so you are getting here the multiple points and multiple sets from set to set the amplitude does vary and from symbol to symbol of particular set the phase does vary so we have a, both the combinations of amplitude variation and phase variation both are incorporated in the quadrature amplitude modulation so this is one part you learn and then we have a this is the 256 qm up to 256 qm you find this is a constellation diagram for all the points we start from 4 qm 16 qm 32 qm 64 qm 128 qm and finally 256 qm so now in today in 5g is a MIMO communication we are using this very uh, high uh, modulation scheme it's known as a 256 QAM so where M is equal to 256 so is equal to 2 raised to N so N is equal to 8 bits are needed to represent one symbol it represents one symbol So this part you need to learn and uh, one more thing you can observe uh, in from QPSK to 16 QM the number of points are increased so their boundaries are uh, compressed uh, so the boundaries the two points are come closer and closer and then because of that for a small noise is sufficient to cross the boundary and whenever we are taking a decision at the receiver side to separate them out by using a thresholding mechanisms then uh, uh, then there would be more probability of error so beat error rate it basically goes to increase from qpsk to qam8 then qm16 then qam32 and then if you go further in QM so that is the ray how the beta rate is going up beta rate is going up this is a disadvantage but the advantage is the bit rate if you consider this is the bit rate so beta rate is going also up so it support the high data rate transmission or the transmission which requires a high data rate like as a multimedia transmission and so forth so this part we you need to understand okay now we reach to the last topic of your syllabus and that is the minimum shift key and gaussian minimum shift key so what we have noted earlier if we are using the frequency shifting key or the phase shifting key so the main problem is the phase variation so if you observe here whenever the symbol is change this is a symbol s1 and this is a symbol s2 so in phase shifting key the phase would be very here is a 45 degree to 135 degree and that is sudden change of a phase or abrupt phase change the signal is spread in a frequency domain And if, if such signal spread in a frequency domain, then it can combine with the neighboring signal in a frequency domain. So if this is a frequency spectrum of your signal, so because of such kind of a jump discontinuity or abrupt change of a phase, the signal spreaded in a frequency domain and we have get the ICI that is known as a inter symbol interference so that is uh, sorry inter carrier interference this is not a good factor 
because because of this uh, uh, because of this intercarrier interference the signal is not able to recover in its original form if you apply the low pass filter or bent pass filter so how to relieve this problem this is the major concern and to relieve this problem whatever the modulation scheme has been proposed is known as a minimum shift key and then it is elaborated further with incorporating some modification and then we have a final version of gmsk is known as a gaussian minimum shift key and gmsk uh, gmsk is the key technology of gsm in gsm uh, which has been proposed as a third generation system where the GM GMSK is a key modulation scheme. So in earlier we have learned QPSK which, which was used with a uh, WCDMA but with the GSMA the appropriate modulation scheme was a GMSK. So that we learn first MSK and then GMSK. So the main concern over here is to reduce uh, this ISI, right? This is the main objective, how to reduce the ISI. So there is a need to modify our scheme of a PSK in such a way that we can get the minimum value of intercarrier interfacing. So the, uh, the scheme has been proposed is the CPSK is a continuous phase shift key. This continuous space shift key, the special case of CPSK is the MSK is known as a minimum shift key and the special case of MSK is a GMSK is known as a Gaussian minimum shift key. So the one solution, so we start with the MSK and then we learn about the GMSK. So the main concern over here, if this two carrier this is a uh, one symbol let's say g1 of t and g2 of t uh, you can even consider this one has a uh, s1 of t and this or s0 of t anything like this this is s1 of t and this would be suppose s0 of t so if they are orthogonal if this this is orthogonal the condition for orthogonality is that it's say uh, for one time period 0 to t this one should be uh, the multiplication or dot product of your two signal s1 of t and s0 of t conjugate should be a zero and if this condition does satisfy so this set is known as a orthogonal so for orthogonal set, set if they combine somewhere so they will produce a zero outcome right so this part becomes a null if the signals are orthogonal and then we have not this spectrum but we have a spectrum like this this is the null so here we are getting something like this or this both are producing a null outcome here so we are really with this problem and we have the signal outcome Right, this portion and this portion right this portion becomes a null so there is very basic requirement and this is the very fundamental concept from where the today OFDMA orthogonal frequency division multiplexing which we are using today in a 4G has been emerged so this concept has been emerged from this way if we want to reduce a ISI so we need to reduce a ISI we need we need a set of orthogonal signal and because of orthogonality the portion which has been overlapped in a frequency domain can produce a null outcome this is the main requirement so looking to this uh, we would i would like to refer this document uh, i quickly go through this document uh, because of a time constraint but uh, this documents I will provide you in our class notes so uh, for a you can take a look of this so let's assume for a minimum frequency spacing uh, in, the, uh, in MSK what would be the minimum frequency spacing here so that we are getting the two uh, signals are orthogonal to each other and if the signals are orthogonal to each other so at the overlapping we are getting the null outcome and the effect of intercarrier interference can be highly reduced. That is the goal. So first we need to find 
if we are choosing the two carrier here f1 and f2 so what is the minimum frequency spacing between f1 and f2 so let's assume here uh, if you are choosing two carrier so if you are choosing the carrier is f1 so here f f1 uh, should be somewhere here somewhere here and uh, there would be a f2 right this would be f1 and this would be suppose f2 so let's say assume here there would be a, some frequencies uh, known as a carrier frequency and this distance is known as a delta f distance this distance is also known as a delta f distance so if you maintain the delta f distance between f coming f uh, between uh, uh, fc and f1 and fc and f2 so we can say f1 is simply fc minus delta f and f2 is simply fc plus delta f with the goal these two frequency components are orthogonal but we don't know what would be the delta f if we know the delta f we can calculate the f1 because fc is known so what is the delta f that we need to find so that and delta f should be choose such a way so that this f1 and f2 would remain in orthogonal so that is the portion that we need to learn and if we know the delta f so by using this calculation we can find the f1 and by using this calculation we can find the f2 right because fc is known but delta f is not randomly choose it should be choose in such a way so that the component of cos f1 t and cos f2 t that we can say the symbol s1 of t and that we can symbol s2 of t should be orthogonal so this part we need to learn right okay so we can go with this so let's choose the two signal s1 of t and s0 of t and this is the condition for orthogonality so to be orthogonal it go, uh, uh, to maintain the orthogonality between the two signals the dot product should be zero within a time period of a uh, this is a time period of one cycle this should be a zero this is a condition for orthogonality sig uh, of the signal then let's assume s1 of t is a this is our s1 of t and this is our s0 of t so this signals is of a two different frequency uh, sorry i i may i, I would to like f0 here so these are the signal of f1 of t 2 pi f1 of t and this is a signal of 2 pi f0 t right so the dot product should be a zero if you can simplify this so there were two cos c into c to cosine term right now assume f1 of f2 uh, f1 of f0 so if you say f1 plus f0 here that would be of 2 fc as per this equation delta f delta f would be cancelled and here if you put here the 2 fc t so this is the integration for one cycle uh, for cosine so cosine have the same area of positive and negative cycle so this would be turned to zero there is no need to write this there would be a zero so we have only one term remains is cos 2 pi f1 minus f0 t if you integrate this so we have a sine term and if you convert this so we have this equation sine 2 pi f1 minus f0 we have only this equation remains because this one the first term becomes a zero this becomes a zero now if we elaborate this portion so that we go got uh, this one multiply here so we have a sine 2 pi f1 minus f0 tb and when the sign becomes a zero so every n pi or k pi it becomes a zero so that should be this theta theta should be of k pi to be this equation should be zero so it's a 2 pi f1 minus f0 tb and if we represent this equation in terms of f1 minus f0 what is f1 minus f0 here f1 minus f0 will give us of a delta f2 delta f right so delta f is basically f1 minus f0 by 2 
so uh, this gives a k pi 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 would be cancelled and then finally we turn out with this equation f1 minus f0 is equal to k by 2 tb and if you put the minimum value of k is equal to 1 so first point where this equation would be 0 is equal to 1 by 2 tb and delta f is what f1 minus f0 by 2 so 2 tb tb is equal to the time period to for a 1 bit is equal to the data rate rb so if you put this value here it becomes rb by 2 and if you put delta f is equal to f1 minus f2 the same has been put here if then we are getting the delta f value is simple rb by 4 so you note down this now we have already calculated the delta f and for if we maintain this delta f then we can have f1 is equal to fc minus rb by 4 so uh, sorry plus yeah minus and that we have f2 is equal to fc plus rb by 4 if you if you maintain this delta f as a rb by 4 here then definitely the two equations that we are getting here is cos 2 pi f1 t and cos 2 pi uh, 0 sorry f0 of t that would be a uh, you can consider as a 0 that definitely this part would be orthogonal so the condition here we have found is if we kept the delta f is equal to rb by 4 then the two cosine terms we are getting is equals 2 pi f1 t and cos 2 pi f0 t are definitely orthogonal so if you put in this equation what what were the equations we have got earlier is the y uh, frequency shift key is uh, that is the amplitude into cos omega i t right so omega i is basically what we can see here and it's a cos 2 pi f1 of t and that is represent as a, a cos the second symbol this is for symbol s1 and for symbol s2 the equation can be represented as a cos 2 pi f0 t but we already found f1 and f0 here we place here so this equation is a cos 2 pi fc plus minus rb by 4 and uh, uh, plus is for f1 and minus is for f0 and like that uh, sorry uh, yeah so you can put up over here and this is the equation now if you elaborate this equation and assume the whatever the data you have available we have only two value minus one and one so this equation is of s of t is basically the equation of your frequency shifting signal which we have already earlier mentioned and learned a lot about this so now uh, if plus or minus can be represented by a n this a n belongs to either minus 1 or plus 1 so let's assume if a 1 is equal to minus 1 and a 2 is equal to plus 1 like this so this plus and minus sign over here is uh, represent with a n so that becomes a 2 pi n rb by 4 this is simple mathematical calculations that you can understand it and if you find the response at the after one cycle so this is t is represent with t minus n tb because n value would be changed so we have a different time period we have a different symbol now what basically interesting is if you want to reduce this jump discontinuity over here so we need to add some linear phase so phase should be linearly vary between one phase to uh, another phase so the important part here is phi 1 and phi 2 so if you try if you if you transact from phi 1 to phi 2 so it should be linearly vary it should be vary we cannot avoid this but it should be linearly vary if it is linearly vary we don't have we have no jump discontinuity This is the important part so what is the important part that we are learning over here is if we don't have a jump discontinuity when the phase is linearly vary from phi 1 to phi 2 so 
if you consider this is a point where the jump discontinuity found this is the point or this is the boundary this is the boundary where the symbol is going to change and where the face is also change with the symbol so at this boundary we can consider whatever the phase here it says suppose phi 1 before the boundary the same phase should be continuity after boundary so that is the important here phi 1 is the phase before before boundary and phi 2 is the phase after boundary and to reduce the phase discontinuity or jump discontinuity that this phi 1 should be equal to phi 2. So that part is has been placed over here. The phase is 2 pi a n as this is a phase. We have taken this because 2 pi f c t is common. So this is the phase we have considered. We have to we need to add the extra phase here because they are providing a dis, uh, jump discontinuity and we have to add the extra phase over here so that they are linearly vary and the phase before the boundary and phase after the boundary becomes equal so this theta term is basically added over here and what would be the theta we can add in a way so that the jump discontinuity should be reduced is again in a questions and that we need to find this answer so theta n is to be added over here to reduce the jump discontinuity and so now the equation looks as 2 pi n rb by 4 t minus n t b plus theta n at this point this point is considered as a theta 1 before the boundary i mean this one or sorry phi 1 and this space is considered as a phi 2 after boundary at the t is equal to n plus 1 t b right so only the difference here is the first space is simply known as a t minus n t b this is running from here right and the another phase is t minus the next time period so n plus 1 tb which is considered over here and this both should be phase so if you simplify this equation we are getting theta n plus 1 equal to theta n n plus 5 by 2 and if you n plus 1 is replaced with n so we are getting the final equation in general form is the theta n is equal to n minus 1 a n pi by 2 so this is a very important part and i think you take a look of this now if you solve in a more general mode so we have the same equation over here this is the same equation right and uh, if uh, this is a recursive process so first we find the theta 0 then theta 1 then theta 2 so if we assume the first phase theta 0 would be 0 then the theta 1 can be identified this if you put there we can find the theta 2 so theta 2 would be found here is theta 1 plus a 1 pi by and for theta 1 if you compile this 2 uh, with a 0 and so if you compile this so it gives the a1 plus a0 so pi by 2 is common if you go for further and further pi 3 then you are getting pi by 2 plus a0 plus a1 plus a2 what are the a0 a1 and a2 they just shows the symbol so earlier we have discussed a n would belongs to belongs to either minus 1 or 1 so this can have a either plus minus one this can have also plus minus one this can also so a zero may be minus one plus one or maybe a plus one minus one anything but it should have only two possibility either it would be a plus or minus accordingly we can find in more general form if you find for theta n then the theta n is basically a zero plus a one up to a n so if you add the theta n here in such a way uh, to reduce the jump discontinuity so that uh, so that the phase before the boundary uh, looks identical to the phase after boundary then the value of theta n would be looks like this in more general form it's addition of all the previous amplitude of the symbol so what is here this is the phase is added in a fsk or psk signal to reduce jump discontinuity and 
why we are reducing jump discontinuity so that the signal should be a uh, uh, should have a little less uh, very very little ICI intercarrier interference right so this is theta and what is this AI over here what is this AI over here this one is AI and this AI is just represent the sign of a symbol or we can say a magnitude of symbol so that is simple represents a better that is the magnitude it's a belongs to it belongs to minus one or one right it just represent the magnitude of a symbol so if you if you have a memory in your system and if you store all the previous value and if uh, you add at the time of n if you add all the n minus one value of your previous symbol ai and then multiply with the pi by 2 to convert in a phase then you have a new phase theta n this new phase theta n would be added in your symbol so that whatever the signal are represented over here they have a very smaller amount of intercarrier interference and this is a special case of a continuously phase shifting key so it is known as a msk this is a case of msk minimum shifting key and so you can learn this uh, looking to the time constant we are not going in detail but this material will be provided so you can read and learn more now whatever the pulse we earlier choose would be as a rectangular phase a rect as a rectangular pulse and for this rectangular pulse we have a sync pulse in a frequency domain so in time domain it is rectangular but in frequency domain it is in a phase here we can see our main objective is the mix, mix, maximum power is to be in a main lobe so this is known as a main lobe and we have a minimum power in this side lobe so main lobe uh, uh, should be consist the maximum power and minimum lobe should, should consist the minimum power but the problem with the sync function is if you go with a rectangular pulse we obviously have a sync pulse in a frequency domain the main problem with sync pulse is they the side lobes have not the minimum power it doesn't have a minimum power it constrain more power so we need pulse shaping and for a pulse shaping we try to produce a pulse which in a frequency domain which have a minimum power inside lobe then rather than rectangular we choose the pulse shape as a gaussian because if we have a maximum power in a main uh, um, in a side lobes then definitely whenever it is combined with some other pulse like this one then definitely they have again an intercarrier interference so only the option is available is that uh, the, that we change the shape of a pulse and if you do the pulse shape then we have a gaussian pulse and gaussian pulse have a minimum power in a side lobes and maximum power in a main lobe and then the msk is slightly modified as a gmsk is known as a gaussian minimum shift key and this gmsk is widely adopted uh, in a gsm system as a key modulation scheme with the the bandwidth which the optimum value of a pt is a 0.5 where the, it's a bandwidth and t for a time period we are getting the optimum value so now if you uh, move further so we have a different value of gmsk it's a 0.5 and 0.3 so uh, and this is a msk so msk if you see here this is your main lobe this is the main lobe maximum power should be constrained and this are the side lobes here also this all are the side lobes so you see which scheme is better so this scheme is better because it has the minimum power power inside lobes so this is generally prefer this one has slightly higher higher power 
inside locks so it is little bit less prefer than this one and if you choose this one so very higher amount of power is actually waste in a side lock because we generally put here the filter uh, uh yeah will this is a filter response so the whatever the power is in a main lock they are important the other power which are in side lobs they are basically produce a ici and that and even if they are not useful because they're not passed through the filter so this one is the case where higher amount of power inside lobs they are generally not prefer this is not prefer this is prefer more then you can prefer this so if we see this one what is the uh, what is this scheme so this scheme which has a maximum power inside lock this is the case of msk this is the case of gmsk with the product of a bandwidth and time is 0.5 and this is the case where it's again the gmsk with the bandwidth and time product is 0.3 so basically this one is prefer but the problem with this scheme the problem with this scheme has higher if you want to save something in a frequency domain effect in time domain also so in time domain the signals are overlap and that produce is isi so we are going with a middle solution in this solution the isi inter symbol interference in time domain we are looking here in frequency domain but if you look in a time domain so if we take the advantage in a frequency domain with a very less ici then the isi will increase so basically isi and ici this is in time domain the signal overlapping in time domain is known as isi and signal overlapping in frequency domain is known as a ici if you want to reduce this one this one increase so the best ici can be obtained with this scheme with gmsk with bandwidth and time product 0.3 but it rise is this isi is minimum then obviously the isi would be maximum so is rise the isi the signal overlapping in a time domain so the middle solution we have to go with and the middle solution is gmsk bt with 0.5 where the side lobes are also in a control and isi is also control so this is a case where this is a case uh, sorry not this one but the this one this is a case where isi and ICI both are control. So this is a best scheme. We can go with this, and this is the major modulation scheme of GSM also. So I would like to stop. Uh, okay, so uh, before we stop here, we take a look of the comparison of various modulation scheme. So if you see the various modulation scheme, then uh, we have learned ASK, FSK and PSK in ASK the informations are stored in form of amplitude in FSK it is in store in form of a frequency in PSK it is stored in form of a phase if you talk about the bandwidth so in ASK is a minimum bandwidth of RB the same bandwidth is observed with the PSK but the scheme like uh, FSK it has very higher bandwidth which may be approximately double than ASK because the two carrier signals are used if you talk about the complexity, so complexity is lower in ASK, but if you move FSK and PSK, so FSK is a moderate bandwidth and PSK is very high bandwidth. If we talk about the power efficiency, so power efficiency is very poor in ASK because the information are stored in terms of a magnitude. So different symbol, we need to decide a different amplitude. So if M will be increased, so power efficiency will further goes down because for every symbol to separate the minimum distance of it, 2a we need we have to go with a different different amplitude so first symbol can be a and minus a then the next set we can have a 3a and uh, minus 3a the next set we have 5a and minus 5a and so forth so that's power efficiency is going down with m further in fsk it is moderate because here the uh, information are not stored in form of a amplitude and it is in form of a frequency and if the frequency does vary from symbol to symbol it will not affect the power because power is mainly depends on amplitude not on the frequency or phase in psk also the power efficiency achieve is better now if you talk about the sensitivity of noise so most of the noise is affected in amplitude form so ask is very sensitive to the noise 
fsk is less sensitive and psk is even very less sensitive because here the informations are stored in form of phase if you talk about the b terrorate performance so ask beta performance is very poor fsk is a moderate beta performance and psk is a good beta performance so if you draw a diagram of a beta rate on y axis with a different value of signal to noise ratio or energy per bit to noise ratio eb by n0 so if you see if eb by n0 goes higher then beta rate goes basically down it means a higher signal to noise ratio means your signal is of a good quality or it has a uh, more magnitude than the noise it superimposes the amplitude over the noise so higher eb by n0 means higher quality of signal to noise ratio it simply means the beta rate goes down but in that case if you see this is the ask this is fsk and this is the psk so if you take any one value of minus one here so uh, let's say uh, if you take the value of a 5 db so if at the 5 db value of eb by n0 if we find the b error rate so b error rate would be found here oh sorry uh, it can be yeah it, it can be constructed like this way uh, this is not this is the ask and this one is the fsk a psk so what we can observe here for psk at, at, at this point here we are getting this bit error rate right oh, sorry. that was right sorry it's my mistake it's a ask that is psk right so for p uh, sorry make a mistake here it's a psk uh, and it is ask so what we can observe here it a, for a, ask we have a some uh, some error it's a, approximately 10 is to minus 1 for the same value of eb by n0 if you plot here so we are getting the b error rate is approximately 10 is to minus 2 so which is smaller which one is larger 10 is to minus 2 is smaller than 10 is to minus 1 and then here the same value of eb by n0 if you plot here so we are getting p error rate is 10 to minus 3 it is even smaller than this and this all obtained at ab by n0 is equal to 5 db this one so what we observe this is basically observed in case of a ask this is observed in case of a fsk and this is observed in case of psk so that means the psk has minimum b error rate compared to fsk and fsk is a minimum deterioration rate compared to so ask has a higher bit rate for any particular uh eb by n0 same you can apply for any other uh, eb by n0 you are getting the same result so for higher bit error uh, bit error rate is observed and for psk we have a lowest beat error rate is observed right, so that's one yeah you can consider this is the higher beat error rate and this one is the lowest beat error rate. now if you move further uh, for a different version of a uh, with m value how if m change the bit rate performance is basically decrease so if you start with the very binary ask if you get, uh, take the three different variations of ask with uh, two re ask 4 RESK and 8 RESK and here again for a minus 1 you can observe the higher bit error rate if for here what you observe is your bit error rate sorry here it may have a again the different value uh, that you can consider as a BASK and that is 8 ASK sorry 8 so what you observe here for ASK you have a higher beta error rate if you go further for ASK you have a lower beta error rate if you go BASK you have even lower beta error rate so the beta error rate increase with the value of M if the M increase then beta error rate is increase right and what is the reason the reason is 
for QPS uh, for one scheme we have four constellation another another higher value of M we have more constellation points are there so this region decision region becomes uh, becomes a smaller so EB by N0 is highly dependent on this and then we take it goes increase definitely higher value of n will increase the bit rate the number of bits transmitted in a one symbol or the same duration but at the same time the bit error rate is also going up so the bandwidth efficiency but the bandwidth efficiency are increased because with the same bandwidth of mri signal we can transmit more number of bits this is not the case of ask but rather than ask if you take the case of fsk psk and anything so we can generally write for any signal ask fsk or psk we can generally write the bit rate increase with the value of m so this part you need to learn okay so this is the what uh, about the syllabus of digital communication and digital communication syllabus in my person uh, i am going to conclude the syllabus with this lecture okay again i repeat the things what we've learned so far so in the syllabus uh, we have learned about the sampling so sampling basically there are the analog signal like this and we need to convert the analog signal into the digital signal here so there is a basically two-step process the first part is a sampling in a sampling we need to consider the Nyquist criteria then there is a quantization to rounding of the value here we have a different version like as a PCM DPCM then we have even learned about the another two schemes like as a delta modulation and adaptive delta modulation then we apply the source encoding here we have learned about the Huffman code how to reduce the number of bits before transmission so Huffman coding we will learn here then we apply the scrambling scrambling is used to randomize the data to provide a more better security and to uh, limit the number of zero in your string then we have a channel encoder so this portion we have not covered it, it falls uh, in a part of Sony search so in channel encoder that we can have a linear block code then there is a cyclic code and there is a convolution codes these are very important about the channel encoder this will uh, increase the reliability of the system then we put the interleaving the number of bits are added in it uh, to support the higher bit rate then we have a digital modulator here we have learned about the various modulation scheme like ASK, FSK, PSK and in PSK even we have learned about the QPSK then we will learn about the quadrature amplitude modulation and then we will learn about the MSK and GMSK so this part we will learn and then there is a power amplifier and the signal is transmitted so this diagram is basically a transmitter of communication system digital communication system so everything is summarized over here now if we go between transmitter and receiver there is a channel channel will add a uh, channel will add the noise in the signal so to remove the noise we are going with a decision detector in between there are many repeaters are there repeater 1 2 3 between transmitter and receiver these repeaters are equipped with a equalizer it will it's a transmitter of equalizer it's a receiver of equalizer it transmit equalizer it's a receiver of equalizer so one side it uh, sorry it receives the signal here and it transmits the signal at different end so this is receiver this is transmitter so it receives the signal from one side and transmit it to other side and then this is the receiver so in the receiver the first part is low noise amplifier then rf amplifier this is like a super heterodyne receiver we have a mixer rf amplifier then we require carrier synchronization so this part is carrier synchronization part then goes to the digital demodulator so it reverses the process what we have done here as a digital um, modulator so we learn about the two kind of a uh, demodulator coherence and non coherence that is for ASK, FSK, PSK and all then there is a D interlever uh, lever it uh, to remove the bits which we have earlier added in interlever then there is a channel decoder so it's a decoder so basically which kind of schemes you use if you use a linear block so it's linear block decoder if it is a cyclic code you use in transmitter so it's a cyclic decoder or if you use the convolution so that would be a convolution decoder then we have a descrambling process then we have a source decoder it's a whatever the main code compression we have apply we take it reverse then we have match filter so match filter is like as a decision uh, uh, 
is it is used as a basically to take the decision here whether the bit receive bit in presence of a noise it is a zero or one so that's the threshold thresholding is basically used here and comparator is used for here then we have a decontizer so it's a reverse process of quantizer and after this this one we are using a low pass filter so it is the reconstruction of your signal which is sample origin so here you are getting the signal again in form of a sample signal and here you are getting the signal in form of a continuous signal and here you are getting the signal in form of a binary like one zero one one zero one so that is a totally reverse process what we apply here there is a analog signal here we are getting a discrete signal this is a discrete time signal and here we have got after passing through quantizer we have got the signal in form of a binary so this is all portion about the digital modulation scheme hope you have enjoyed this subject and uh, prepare well for all the subjects digital communication has a very rich contents even whatever they describe in your syllabus they are not sufficient if you go for a further study and if you are interested for a research later on you can find the various aspects of digital communications very fundamental concept and even in 4g and 5g also where uh, there are some fundamental concepts are used in a modified way so hope you understand this one and this subjects uh, will provide a good insight okay so that is uh, 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 good for everything and thank you for listening this uh, lecture